I'm like an old Italian man, even at my age. I have this ritual to my morning that starts the same way. I wake up when the sun shoes are coming up, get up, do a little workout, come home, get ready for work, and then I head to the office, but between where my home is and the office is the model bakery, an amazing 100-year-old bakery right in the middle of the Napa Valley, and I stop for a double soy latte, trying to watch my weight, you know how it is, and I think I can get by the bread, because they say, don't buy too much bread, it's not so good for you. You think I would buy just one loaf? No, I end up with like three loaves of bread every day. By the afternoon, I remember I have a meeting in San Francisco, three days later, I'm driving, I look in the back seat, there's my bag of three-day-old bread. What do I do? Panzanella. One of my favorite techniques of all time, a technique, because one technique and four seasons later you have four great recipes that will be with you the rest of your life. Michael Chiarella's Napa is funded by Salton, innovative products for a healthy today and tomorrow. Featuring a full line of Breadman machines to make artisan breads for use in your own home. Salton, we'll bring out the baker in you. By Sunkist, fresh citrus taste, cooking with Sunkist throughout the day. Sunkist. Our promise, your inspiration. By All Clad Metal Crafters. All Clad is bonded construction. All Clad is functional design. All Clad is professional equipment. All Clad is a state of mind. My memory of a kid growing up is at the end of supper, my mom would take whatever bread we had left over and would slice it into pieces about this thick and she put it in the same loaf pan each and every time. And that loaf pan would go underneath the stove where it would get a little dry heat from the stove above to really dry the bread out naturally in its own course. Now the kind of things that we would make with leftover bread are the dishes that you know of famous Italian cuisine today. Crostini, bruschetta, panzanella, acqua cotta. All of these recipes are celebrating the life of a loaf of bread. Well today's show is about my favorite technique with old bread, panzanella. The panna in the panzanella means bread, right? What we do with it is gonna turn your imagination wild. Now here's how you start. If you have a loaf of bread that's a couple of days old like I have here, grab a serrated knife. Now French knives are great for mincing, but a serrated knife is really meant for bread. All right, so we're just gonna take, we're gonna take the crust off this. I cut it in half first so I can stand it straight up because I really care about my fingers. And then we're gonna curl our fingers up and cut a little bit of the crust off. Now if you don't mind the crust, you know, my grandmother used to say, eat the crust, you'll have beautiful children. I have three beautiful children, so I ate my share of crust. But if it's a little dry, you can take some off. All right, and we're just going to cut them into croutons. Any size you want. Sometimes if I'm doing kind of a, a meal that's a little more refinato, I'll cut them into little teeny croutons. But in this case, it's a Tuesday night. I got more tomatoes than I can shake a stick at. Let me take these croutons. Now you could use whatever bread you have. If you have a little panamisto, it really doesn't matter. All right, so this is about half dry. Now these croutons, what they're really going to be is crispy on the outside and nice and soft and luscious on the inside. Now one of the things people always ask me is, how do you do it? How do you, if you're coming home from work, you have the same problems we do. Uh, you know, how do you shave a little time out of your day and not have to use you know, a little speed scratch, something in a box to help you get there? Well, I'll tell you what, I do things in advance a little bit and I throw them in the freezer so they're good to go. Now what we have here is a little roasted garlic. I took a little extra of the roasted garlic, mixed it with some thyme and a little of the roasted garlic oil and folded it into some beautiful farmhouse butter, put it into a log and it's good to go. So my bread's already stale, my butter's already already made and flavored. I'm going to go into a hot pan. It's a little bit cooler today than I thought, so I'm going to put a little bit of brownness on the butter. So my pan's hot. 
the butter goes in. And I want this to, just to get a little bit brown. The colder it is outside, the deeper and the richer that you want your flavor. So remember your flavor barometer and your temperature barometer. So the hotter it is, the lighter you want your flavor. So if, so if it was 100 degrees today, I'd just barely melt the butter because I want the delicate flavor. But it's a little bit cool. I don't know why. That's a little cool today. Croutons go in. Salt. Twist a fresh ground black pepper. Don't ever use that stuff that's pre-ground. I mean, like that's any easier than doing this. Just grind a couple and you're fine. Turn them. Turn them around a little bit. We start the caramelization process now. Just go right into a pan. All right, now on top of this, I'm gonna grate some really fine Reggiano Parmigiano. This is where one of these little microplanes comes in handy. Because look at this. Instead of having big chunks of cheese in here, it's just going to grate some snow right on top. Now this snow of Parmigiano is going to hold on and bake together. It'll be like a little crocanti, which means like a, like a nougat at the end. Now right before you go in the oven, this is where you'd want to turn the convection on if you have it. People always ask me, what kind of stoves do you cook on? Do you need a big stove? This is one of those times where you really want the power of a convection. It'll keep the croutons tender on the inside and get them really crisp quickly on the outside. And before I show you any of the variations to panzanella, I gotta show you the traditional one. Now traditional panzanella is just tomatoes. Now these are things that you do at the height of the season. At the height of the tomato season, when you have more tomatoes and you know what to do, what do you do? You make panzanella. Now with a tomato, depending on where you live and what kind of tomatoes you have, if you have a thick skinned tomato, you might want to give them a quick peel. All you have to do is put them in some boiling water for about 20 seconds. When you see the skin beginning to come off, pull them out and just give them a little peeling. All right? Cut them in half. And depending on the time of the year, it's early in our tomato season, you might want to just take some of the seeds out. Give them a squeeze. Take the back of your knife. and just push some of the seeds off. You know, sometimes I don't mind a few seeds. If it's Monday night and I don't have much time, I won't peel the tomatoes, I won't seed the tomatoes. All I'll do is chop them all up together. So all you do is cut these guys. And I like them to be about the same size as the crouton. So everything's about the same. The same. These just go in. Now I'm draining them. As you can see, this time of the year, I don't have a lot of juice, but sometimes if it's uh, you know the end of August, beginning of September, beginning of October, this bowl would be full of juice. Now what I would do, if you look in there really close, you see that clear liquor? I take that and I make myself a tomato martini with a little bit of vodka on top of that. That's something you can do with the extra juice. Today I think we're gonna need it all. Now that you have the tomatoes diced up, it's all really simple from here. This is a tomato vinaigrette. It doesn't just go with panzanella, okay? Like I keep telling you guys, I'm gonna show you a technique and I'm gonna give you about five other ways to use it. This tomato vinaigrette, all it takes is the tomatoes, all their juice, because I think I'm gonna want all that juice today. It's gonna take some lemons. Give them a cut. Now you can use the American juicers, right? These nice little reamers right here. A couple seeds go in, I'm not worried about it. If they're bugging me, I'll pull them out a little bit later. Now, the Italian juicer is a little bit more like this. And it's a little quicker and I don't have to clean a utensil. Ah, oh, these lemons are unbelievable. Now a little extra virgin olive oil. This would be one of those places that you would use your very best olive oil, an extra virgin, something deep and green and wonderful. And the more I talk, I'll just begin to get the right amount of olive oil inside. Okay, a little fresh chopped garlic. Don't buy the minced stuff already done. When you see garlic that it begins to get a little marron, a little brown, you know that it's oxidizing. And that flavor is just, it's just not right. What's it take to mince a little garlic? Okay, garlic goes in. If you're eating with family, more garlic goes in. A little bit of very finely minced red onion or shallots, or if you don't have them, don't use them. Again, you can add to this whatever you like. I don't care. You want to put in some grilled zucchini, you know, make it your dish. That's the whole idea. Now for herbs, again, I'm going to use some basil and Italian parsley. 
and some thyme and some tarragon because I have it. If I didn't have tarragon, I wouldn't use it. Don't go crazy about every stem. So what? You get a little bit of stem inside your salad. No big deal. A little bit of pretzemolo, some Italian parsley. Do not use that curly stuff. We're going to save that for the fast food restaurants to go in between the orange slice. Some fresh thyme. I like to taste my herbs. Everybody else likes to kind of mince them up until they go away. And some tarragon. I love the kind of licorice -y character a really good fresh tarragon. These are no big deal to put on a window seal garden and you'll have all the herbs kind of year round. Okay, from here you can use a spoon, right, so it doesn't go on you. Or you can give them a big toss like a chef would. Look at that. I'm telling you, if I had a little spaghettini, I wouldn't let this be a hot pasta at all. Just take the spaghettini right from the pot. A couple spoons of the pasta water in the tomato vinaigrette, it goes, it's fantastic. Imagine a pan seared piece of say halibut, crispy on the outside, salty and spicy, and just two spoons of this right over the top, a little bruschetta in your other hand, a glass of Pinot Grigio, oh my God, I'm telling you. Now this is a technique you can use and should use all summer long. Okay, into here, salt, Now the croutons go in, okay? Now you can see on the croutons right in here how crispy and amazing they are. Remember I told you about the cheese, what it was gonna do. Now you're seeing for sure. The croutons go in. Get all that good stuff, all right? If you're cleaning your pan too much, you're throwing a lot of flavor away. And now you can see this isn't like those uh, Americani biscotti that are hard all the way through. You see this crouton? Soft on the inside, crispy, crispy and amazing on the outside. We want that softness. Texture is a flavor. Texture is your friend. So I don't want these to be really soggy. Now in the old country, they like them soggy. That's the tradition. It's their tradition. It's not my tradition. I like texture. My job's to make things taste as good as I can make them taste. Okay, now there's a couple different ways that you can serve panzanella. And take a grate of a little Parmigiano and just set it right on the table for the family. Or, let's say it's Saturday night and you got caught and some guests showed up that you forgot that you invited over and you want to show it a little more rifinato, you can take one of your spring molds, just like this, without the bottom in it, set it on a beautiful glass plate like I have here, and fill it up. And this little forma is going to give you a very dramatic presentation. And it's going to be able to let you serve a dish like this family style. Now you can serve a panzanella with a big piece of roasted chicken, big roasted chicken alongside here and you have supper. It's not just a salad. Because of the texture and everything with it, this is really a wonderful meal. Now all you want to do, if you're going to use a form, now you can do these with a four inch form, an eight inch form. You're just gonna press them with the back of the spoon just until they can hold their shape. All right. And then if it works, you can pull this guy off. Incredible, look at that. Now what we have is a little bit of arugula. Beautiful mound of arugula, any greens that you want. Again, I don't care what greens. If you want to use the iceberg over here, that you get the groceria. I don't care. But for me, I want a nice peppery salad. When you're setting these up, use your hands and get them up underneath there. All right, a little bit of gray salt. Some fresh ground black pepper. A little olio de olive. Some extra virgin olive oil. And to finish, just a snowing of some Reggiano Parmigiano. I don't know about you, but that's a plate full of summer. From the moment the Model Bakery opens in the morning, there's a constant flow of customers. Both locals and visitors stop here for coffee and a sticky bun. 
The Model Bakery has been in St. Helena since the 1920s. Our brick ovens were built by Italian masons sometime uh, in the early 20s, and we they're built right into the wall of the uh, building. They're 18 feet deep by about 14 feet wide, and we bake right on the hearth of the bricks. If you look at our breads, you can see the shape of the brick in the dough itself. Our breads are made with a natural wild yeast starter that we take from wine grapes. We pick the grapes in the harvest season and crush them and get a, a nice good juice fermentation and we introduce flour to that juice and we're looking for the wild yeast on those grapes and we inoculate them with the flour and we start um, uh, bacteria growing and after a week or so we feed it periodically with more flour and we've got a complete sourdough starter that is used to leaven our breads and it makes a good story for the wine country too. After breakfast you can stroll down Main Street, one of the valley's busiest attractions. Main Street in St. Helena is bustling all day long. At night though the town's quiet except here inside the model bakery where the bakers are firing up the 1920 ovens. Our, our ovens are fired by big gas guns that we insert in the mouth of the oven and we light them with a propane torch. It's sort of like a giant flamethrower. That heat goes into the bricks and stays there for several hours. To get a good sense of St. Helena's history, stop in at the Bale Mill. Edward Bale built it in 1846. It became a center of the valley and the town of St. Helena grew around the mill. What I love about living in a small town like St. Helena is you can get everybody to work for you. The butcher, in this case, I got the butcher to pound the veal chops for me. And to make a spring panzanella, all you need, if you think back to the tomatoes, is a little bit of liquid, a little bit of moisture. It's very simple. We've picked asparagus. Now, I like asparagus that are this size when they really have some flavor. Those little things we're going to leave for the franchise to do whatever they do with them. But for me, I like a full, full size asparagus. Now, all you do is grab an asparagus from into in, give them a really good bend, and right where they break, that's where they're the most tender, and that's where you should stop. So, so break the asparagus where they decide they want to break. Once all the asparagus are broken, you can take a paring knife like I have here and just peel the ends off because those are going to be a little bit tougher. Once those are done, we're going to take the tips off of these asparagus because we're going to cook them a little bit less than we are the stems. So cut the tips off. And to some boiling water, add a good amount of salt. This is the only chance you're going to have to get salt inside the asparagus. And go ahead and put the tips in and cook them until they're just tender. Now pull them out and whatever you do, I don't care who tells you what on one of those cooking shows, do not put them in ice water. We don't want to rinse that flavor away. We've been waiting all winter to taste asparagus. So just lay them out so they can cool off on their own. They're going to stay green and be really, really tasty. While those are cooling, take the stems and put the stems inside that same water and cook them until they're tender, a little bit more like Nana would do, right? So they're really, really soft because what we're going to do after we take these out is we're going to puree them. So the stems go inside the blender, a little bit of salt, a good crack of fresh ground black pepper, and here's my trick to keep the asparagus puree green, just a little bit of ashado de ascorbico, a little ascorbic acid or vitamin C that you can get at the pharmacy. That will just keep it green as an antioxidant. From there, some fresh basil, and again, if you see marjoram or, or oregano, use whatever you want, I really don't care. Just a little fresh herb in there is really quite nice. From there, I'm gonna go a good amount of extra virgin olive oil. Put the lid on, remember to put the lid on first, and begin to give them a good puree. Once the asparagus puree is nice and smooth, you can see I want this to coat my mouth really nicely. Go ahead and pull it out and turn it into a bowl. Now once you have an amazingly smooth and fragrant asparagus puree like here, all you have to do is grab some of its springtime friends and mix them with your croutons and you have an amazing panzanella. In this case, what we've done is we've grabbed some petit pois, some English peas, with the asparagus tips, which are perfect, which we're going to add in, and a spring onion. Now, I don't know if there's spring onions all over the country, but if you see them, they're fantastic to use. And i tell you what we're going to do. 
Before I mix this panzanella, I'm gonna get my veal right on the grill. And what I've done, I go into the butcher and I say to the mashalayo, I say, hey, don't try to sell me one of those rib chops like it's a loin chop for $14 a pound. So I negotiate just a little bit. Take a veal chop that isn't necessarily just perfect and ask them to pound them till you can just almost see your fingers through it. Not too thin, but not too thick at all. So we get them nice and thin, and this is gonna become our plate for our panzanella. So we take these. Whenever we're seasoning anything, people are always afraid. Whenever I'm out on the road doing classes, they're like, oh my God, you use so much salt. Half of the seasoning is gonna go off in the pan, so don't be afraid to season it. That goes on. A little fresh ground black pepper, good amount. A little oleo de olive, some olive oil, just enough to give it a good coating. Now if you'd like, you could even take some lemon since it is springtime and grate a little limone right on there. Oh my God. Things have to be hot to get caramelization. These are gonna go on. Don't worry about grill marks, especially guys out there, they're always looking to try to get it like on those ads for those fast food restaurants. Grill marks one way is fine, preferable. All right, these go on. We're only gonna cook this veal on one side, but so while these are cooking, now this is where it gets fun. Take your wooden bowl and in go your croutons. The asparagus tips go in. A few of the English peas. I like to taste my vegetables, so I like lots of vegetables with these. These spring onions. All right, now if you want a little bit of grains, a little roughage, here you go. Here's some radicchio that's just been minced up really finely, gives a beautiful color and some spinach. Again, any, any ingredients in here that you like, it's really up to you, it's not up to me. On top of this, a little bit of salt and pepper. Flavor is what we're looking for here, folks. A little olio de olive and the asparagus puree. All right, just a kiss of fresh lemon juice. We're gonna give these a quick toss. Now you see what I mean about cooking just on one side of this? The veal is ready, right? You can see the juices beginning to come up right here, right? That means that the veal's cooked on that side. If we look underneath, we find some amazing grill mark. That caramelization equals flavor. All right, so we're gonna take these chops, we're gonna turn them over. I love this. Love this. Okay, this guy goes off. Now, while I'm ready in that rest, the panzanella is just perfect. So I'm just gonna take a little insalatina right on top of each one of these. Take a little bit more lemon zest. And I have a little rigotta salata. Now, rigotta salata is just that. It's salted rigotta. It's really no big deal. You can use parmigiano if you want to use parmigiano. And just give them a little bit of a peeling. Some shards. Just begin to pull off. Have an olio de olive. And I tell you what, if you're wondering what am I doing putting these onto a platter, this is what I would do with my partner for a dinner for two, really romantic. Rather than having all these separate plates and everything, what I love to do is we have a little paillard of veal that's actually our plate. We're gonna set this up on the corner, each of us a glass of wine, and we're gonna get a chance to have a really romantic meal. So remember, panzanella, 
Hey, panzanella is a bread salad. Any season that you want to make a bread salad, whether it's asparagus and peas and radicchio, tomatoes, wild mushrooms, pumpkins, I don't care. It's a technique that you can turn into an everyday recipe. Mm. What more could a guy ask for? An amazing piece of veal paillard with a spring pea panzanella. Somebody sitting across from me that I really care about. A glass of Napa Valley Pinot Noir. Mmm. All you have to remember is that if you can taste the memory, that'll be a taste that'll last a lifetime. Michael Chiarello's Napa is funded by... Sunkist. Fresh citrus taste. Cooking with Sunkist throughout the day. Sunkist. Our promise. Your inspiration. By Salton. Innovative products for a healthy today and tomorrow. Bringing you the family of George Foreman's lean, mean, fat-reducing grilling machine. Salton, the secret to indoor grilling. And by All Clad Metal Crafters. <laughs>